Hey everyone. Give me a second and I try to share my screen or my web webcam at least. Here we go. Okay, so can can you see my uh, webcam or or only the desktop? I guess. Hmm. Somehow I should be able to share this. Okay. Great, so you can see my webcam and the desktop as well. Um, okay, before uh, we start the kicking of this webinar, um, Let's wait a couple uh, minutes before everyone can join. So I can use this time to to share uh, share you uh, uh, what's the situation here in Hungary currently uh, with the uh, new Crohn virus because I guess that's some that's a very hot topic currently. Uh, I, I don't know where you guys are from, uh, but here in Hungary. Uh, the borders are, are closed, uh, everyone is at home. Uh, we are at the home office, so that's why uh, my background is not like a, a, in an office environment, uh, but I'm broadcasting from home and all, all my colleagues uh, are helping me uh, remotely. Uh, we started this about, so on Monday, this is the, the uh, th third day uh, in, in home office and uh, also the schools are closed. So it's interesting because my um, four-year-old uh, daughter, uh, she's uh, at home and and well, it's not that easy to, to work and take care of, uh, of her uh, at the same time. But fortunately, currently she's sleeping so, so I can work and uh, we can do this webinar. Okay, I guess uh, I guess we can start now the presentation part. So I switch off my cam and let's go with the presentation. Okay, so I'm so grateful that. Uh, that you guys joined to me today to to learn more about uh, how how to uh, detect and remove malware from your servers and uh, well for us uh, this is a very uh, uh, important topic uh, because our goal at bitninja is to to make the internet safer and uh, do it doing it together uh, and i, I will Tell you later why why uh, this uh, this part is so important for us. Um, um, okay, so uh, when uh, about uh, fifteen years ago, uh, fifteen years ago, uh, I've uh, uh, set up a, a web hosting business here in Hungary. Um, we we had a custom built uh, control panel that time cpanel and plask was uh, uh, much younger so uh, not that production ready like like they are today uh, and um, and uh, we we grow uh, uh, pretty fast and uh, after like 10 years we had like 6000 uh, customers from hungary and a lot of uh, WordPress sites. So like uh, 70, 80% of the websites hosted uh, was uh, WordPress. And uh, 
as time passed, passed on, uh, they get uh, they got um, outdated. Uh, so hackers started to exploit uh, and attack these sites. So about five years ago, uh, or maybe now it's six years ago, we, we had a lot of uh, troubles with hacked websites and uh, um, and DOS attacks and uh, spam coming in, going out. Uh, I, I bet you know how it feels when uh, customers complaining about uh, such things and uh, you feel the frustration that you 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 feel that okay i need to do something with it because i can't uh, tell my uh, customers the uh, grocery store owner or the uh, uh, hairdresser salon uh, uh, you know uh, hairdresser uh, to to fix their site somehow when uh, me as as a provider can't uh, can do anything or can do much about this problem. So we uh, decided to create an in-house solution and that's how uh, the first versions of BitNinja was born. And uh, soon we realized that th this is a wor worldwide problem and uh, then we created a, a separate company for BitNinja. Um, we, we identified a, a funnel of uh, how a website is hacked and it's it starts uh, in most of the cases with some kind of scan uh, then uh, when when the botnet so in most of the cases uh, the attacks happens uh, through an automated uh, system so through botnets most of the uh, cases but sometimes it, it is manual but but uh, but uh, the funnel is almost the same. So then, then the uh, when when there's a vulnerability found by a scan, uh, the uh, attack mechanism will exploit this uh, this vulnerability and uh, infect the uh, attack target. So uh, this infection is some kind of backdoor or uh, or malware uh, that is uh, planted or deployed. Uh, on your server, uh, maybe it's just one PHP file that was saved on your uh, on your disk, but this is still an infection, and uh, this is still a, a backdoor uh, to your server, or or at least uh, in a, an unprivileged uh, account. And sometimes then they um, they connect to a command and control center uh, to become part of the botnet and start using your resources. To send out spam and do DOS attacks and and many many other malicious things, and uh, sometimes it, it can uh, uh, add new resources to the uh, attackers to expand their botnets. So today uh, we're gonna uh, okay. So Bitinjo is built to be an easy to use uh, solution for this problem. So you just install Bitinjo in your server. And uh, you can uh, you can avoid most of these uh, uh, these uh, steps, and you can you can stop the attacker. But but and uh, this is this is the main topic of of this webinar. What if uh, there was uh, malware and backdoors and shells and other uh, things installed on your server, or at least the the uh, web hosting accounts before? you install BitNinja, uh, then uh, the situation is a, a bit different because uh, first you have to clean somehow your server. And uh, honestly, uh, at the first versions of BitNinja was focused mostly on uh, how to stop new attacks. So how to, uh, how to uh, stop the scanning phase, the exploitation phase, how to catch uh, real-time uh, malware, and uh, how to, uh, to to block the uh, the uh, attack chain um, well hol holistically. Uh, but now we we realize that this is also important to uh, give a, a very efficient uh, uh, method to to remove uh, the mal malwares that, uh, that that are already present on the server. Um, so. Uh, that's the big problem uh, with malware, that uh, the malware may 
have pre-existed on the server before you install uh, or, or yeah before you install any uh, cyber defense uh, systems and uh, this is much harder to deal with those uh, infections uh, if, if you uh, if they are already deployed and they are already in action um, okay so let's see how can we uh, find those uh, those malicious code and uh, i will start with uh, a little bit of malware history um, w the first versions of uh, php malware was uh, kind of like uh, uh, regular uh, file man manager tools and uh, and they are pretty much written by uh, by um, by good coders, uh, and sometimes they were used for the good, sometimes for the bad. Uh, but basically, uh, they were not um, uh, not uh, specifically uh, created to to hide. Uh, so um, the intention um, uh, behind the code was uh, not to 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 hide itself. Uh, so uh, sometimes uh, it's just one PHP file with, with a regular coding and sometimes using uh, good standards. Uh, and uh, uh, when when this first line of uh, infections uh, started to kick in, um, there there was a quite good uh, tools to to remove this kind of malware because uh, when you have a clean code. Uh, to detect this code, uh, this is pretty easy. Uh, you have, uh, you, you can collect, uh, uh, you can do a, a, a collection of uh, known malware codes, and then you can simply uh, match uh, it with, with each files. So, um, for example, you, you collect 1000 uh, malicious codes, and uh, then you simply compare uh, this code, or, or so each of the 1,000 uh, code, with every newly created or uh, modified files, and this in this way you can uh, you can find the exact matches. But uh, this is a bit uh, resource hungry uh, to 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 do this uh, comparison uh, that way. So that's why um, that's why. Uh, anti-malware uh, creators um, have decided to to uh, do something similar to this, but but something that is uh, much faster. Um, I um, okay. So uh, what what they uh, found is uh, what what if we create a hashing function? Uh, I don't know if you know what is a hash function, but but I, I try to. Uh, to tell it uh, in a nutshell. Uh, so with a hashing uh, function, you can uh, uh, give a, a string or, or a file, and it will generate a, a fixed length uh, string or, or byte string, basically. Um, and uh, every time the code is the same, uh, it will generate the same uh, same hash from, from that code. Um, sometimes uh, it may happen that uh, two different codes give you the same hash string, but this is uh, extremely rare, and this hashing functions was um, fine-tuned to uh, to make as uh, as uh, low um, uh, um, uh, of, of this uh, this matching. So uh, this is called. Uh, um collision so so uh, uh, as much collision free as possible uh, one of the most uh, well known or or uh, very widely widely used uh, hashing function is md5 uh, it might be a bit old uh, but uh, this is very fast to to generate and uh, gives uh, quite low uh, collision uh, probability uh, there are also other hashing functions like uh, SH1 uh, and uh, 128 and 200 and, uh, 
56, um, but uh, but the MD5 is is still uh, very uh, uh, so very much used uh, for for detecting malware. So what 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 you can do is uh, to to take the same set of uh, known malware files, generate the MD5 uh, hash from each of them. And then when you do the matching, so when there's a new file uh, that you would like to uh, to uh, to match to find out if it if it is a malware or not, um, only use the generated uh, uh, so so you uh, you generate an MD5 uh, hash from the uh, the file uh, that is under uh, that that you would like to uh, to decide and uh, you take this hash and uh, you just match uh, the, the set of uh, malware hashes uh, and this is much faster uh, and uh, you, you don't have to to store a lot of malwares for this and you don't uh, need to to do uh, um, uh, a lot of string matching everywhere so that's why uh, hash based uh, signature detection was uh, was very popular and uh, and many uh, many early uh, virus detect detection systems were uh, working uh, this way. And uh, when when the um, uh, when, when this became uh, popular, um, the hackers realized that mm, okay, so uh, this is quite easy to to find our uh, backdoor, uh, and and they they known that uh, the uh, uh, detection is based on a, a, a hashing function of the file, and how can we uh, evade this uh, this uh, detection technique? Well, uh, unfortunately, this is very very easy uh, to evade uh, such a, a detection mechanism because it is uh, enough to to change one byte. Uh, for example, add a space at the end of the file, and the hash that was generated from the file uh, will be completely different, and the uh, anti-malware um, software won't recognize that file. So um, this is the uh, disadvantage of using uh, uh, hash-based uh, signatures. Um, at the same time, the false positive rate uh, for for this detection technique is uh, pretty low because uh, only if there's a collision with a with a, a clean uh, uh, a clean code um, and and very uh, and, and there's very low um, uh, probability uh, to have a collision. Uh, false negative uh, negatives are are also uh, also so sorry false negatives are are very high because uh, it is easy to evade, so you just uh, change one byte, uh, and uh, the detection was uh, evaded. Um, it is very uh, resource friendly because it, it, this is fast to generate an MD5 hash or, or uh, almost any crypt cryptographic hash. And uh, what is also good that you can um, easily automate the generation of these hashes. Uh, so uh, if you have a, a file, um, then uh, you can automatically generate an MD5 hash from this. So um, you can. Uh, so it is easy to create a, a new signature uh, using this technique. Um, it can only detect uh, the clean code, as I mentioned. Uh, so if you modify the code, no, no detection. And if there's a, an obfuscated code, then uh, there's no chance to, to detect. Uh, okay, so uh, now the uh, advantages uh, is, is at, at the uh, hackers now. Uh, they can modify the file uh, and uh, they can avoid uh, the, the detection. Um, how uh, uh, what, what was the response from the uh, attacker uh, from the um, uh, signature or, or anti malware uh, creators uh, the next uh, detection technique is uh, pattern matching and uh, well basically uh, this technique is be based on uh, creating uh, some strings and trying to to match it on the file 
uh, as you can see uh, uh, in the example file, uh, you can you can create a signature that will find the the evil uh, word, and this is quite uh, often used by uh, uh, by um, backdoors and uh, and uh, 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 remote uh, code ex execution um, malwares. Uh, but uh, uh, this uh, detection technique has a lot of disadvantages as well. So if you just uh, try to, uh, to to match uh, malwares using uh, uh, string matching, then you you can expect a, a very uh, high false positive rate. And at the same time, uh, the false negative rate is is also pretty high because. Um, if the uh, attacker knows that uh, there's a pattern matching detection mechanism, then they can try to uh, to change the code. For example, this uh, word, the evil word, can be written as capital E, uh, small V, capital A, small L, and it will generate the very same code. So it will uh, run the same way as uh, as it was written this way, but uh, you can avoid the detection. So this is a big uh, disadvantage of this technique. Uh, and what is also, uh, well, a, a disadvantage is to create good signatures, uh, you need uh, deep technology knowledge. You need to know how uh, these scripts are built and what are those uh, strings that you can fetch to to good uh, to create good um, signatures. Uh, so it takes a, a lot of time to create a new signature uh, based on a pattern matching uh, technique. Uh, it can detect uh, clean code in most of the cases. Um, it can detect uh, modified code as well, uh, but only partially uh, because uh, what I mentioned, if the uh, attacker will start to play play around with, with the uh, capitals or spaces or, or uh, well, uh, there's a lot of possibilities that it, they can change and the, the code remains the same, um, and they can evade this technique. and. Uh, this is uh, still not uh, able to find uh, obfuscated malwares. Uh, if you if you uh, have troubles and uh, if you don't know what uh, an obfuscated code means, uh, I will uh, shortly tell it to you. Okay, so here comes the next uh, uh, trial from uh, anti-malware uh, 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 companies or or uh, uh, okay so. Um, the next uh, next uh, technique was uh, uh, based on creating rules. Basically, you can create uh, uh, your so so, you can, so writing a, a code to uh, specify a rule is uh, is relatively easy. So I can say, okay, if the script uh, if the the uh, string starts with uh, I don't know, evil, and uh, then it uh, after uh, some spaces, uh, it, it starts with base 64 decode, uh, and I can S to uh, string lower the whole string, uh, and uh, this way I can get a, um, a better pattern matching, basically. So I can try to fix the um, problems of uh, the classic pattern matching, but uh, uh, th this is uh, this this mechanism uh, still have uh, a lot of disadvantages. For example, creating such a signature, uh, writing it in, uh, for example, in Yara. Yara is especially built, uh, so it's a, it's a, a language that was especially built uh, to to write um, uh, signatures, uh, rule-based signatures. And uh, it is widely used uh, uh, for uh, uh, cyber defense systems. And uh, we also tried uh, uh, 
to to um, to add uh, Yara to our uh, own malware detection system, and and we still use uh, signature based and pattern matching uh, in our uh, own malware detection. Uh, but uh, after uh, trying it and, and and experimenting with it, we realized that uh, Yara and and rule based detection is just uh, um, pattern matching with steroids. So, um, so it's it's uh, not good enough because uh, you need um, you need high skilled uh, um, uh, engineers uh, to to write new uh, signatures, uh, and there's still a, a big chance for false positives and false negatives as well. And you 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 cannot deal with. Uh, obfuscated code still, and the obfuscation is is something that um, almost every botnet and um, hacker use nowadays. Um, so basically, it, it, this is not not a solution. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this op uh, this techno technique called obfuscation. Um, well, when you have a source code and uh, you uh, need to somehow hide uh, uh, from human eyes. So uh, you want to to make a code that is not readable for uh, other humans because, uh, for example, you want to um, you want to keep it as a secret. Um, uh, I saw many times. Uh, uh, using obfuscation techniques uh, for uh, for checkout code or for banking uh, uh, parts of the code or or licensing. Um, uh, so basically, what obfuscation means is uh, you have a, a clean code and uh, somehow you convert it to a, a, a new code that is uh, if you if you run uh, uh, any of so so the the clean or the obfuscated one it will give you the exactly same results uh, so in the the php interpreter it will uh, it will do the same things but as a source code uh, it will be unreadable for humans and there are a lot of different uh, obfuscators that you can find on the internet um, and there are even paid uh, obfuscators, uh, uh, and uh, some. Uh, so most of them uh, will hide the code, and uh, and this is a big problem for a security specialists because uh, when when you can see the clean code, uh, it is uh, relatively easy to tell that okay, this is a malicious code because it wants to upload something or connect to an IRC uh, uh, server or uh, do malicious things or send out spam. But when you only can see uh, bits and bytes and <laughs> zigzag everywhere, then you can't, uh, can't uh, uh, decide if it's a, a bunny code or, or a malicious one. So um, this is a big problem. Uh, and um, and we wanted to find a solution for this because we see that uh, all shared hosting provider and well everyone uh, who who use PHP uh, suffer from this. But okay, so uh, how can you deal with obfuscated code? Okay, um, what we. Uh, what we have found lately uh, is uh, uh, you can uh, build up the structure of a of a PHP program, and what if we uh, do uh, well kind of pattern matching, uh, not on the source code but on the stru structure of the program. Uh, that's why uh, we. Uh, we experimented with this uh, topic a lot, and and uh, we we developed a brand new detection method that is not like any of the others found on the market uh, currently. And uh, this new uh, detection method is based on uh, the 
structure of the source code. And uh, uh, this uh, detection method uh, has a lot of advantages. Uh, I, I, I will tell it soon. Um, but before we go go on, um, uh, this is um, so I, I don't want to go too deep in how to how how we uh, generate this uh, uh, this this structure because uh, this is a, a secret technology in Bitninja. Uh, but um, but uh, this is very important that uh, that this is different uh, um, from any of the other solutions. Okay, so um, what are the properties of uh, of this uh, technique? Um, well, uh, when you uh, match the uh, structure of the program, uh, you can expect a very low false positive rate and. Uh, uh, this is very important, I think, uh, and at the same time, a very low false negative rate, because um, no matter how uh, the um, uh, the hacker modify the code, uh, add spaces uh, or new lines, or change the ver the name of the variables, or uh, or or name of the functions, or or try uh, any any of the uh, evasion techniques, uh, the structure of the program must be the same because uh, the uh, one, of, one of the most important uh, thing about op obfuscation is it needs to, to run uh, just like the clean code. Uh, so uh, we use this uh, property of obfuscation and uh, that's why uh, it, it will give a, a very low uh, false uh, negative matches and uh, and also uh, low false positives because um, if uh, the structure of the code looks like a malware then but there's a very low chance that there will be a legit code that has the same structure because then you can use that legit code as a malware <laughs> so it's uh, so easy like this and at the same time uh, you can generate these signatures uh, automatically so you can uh, say that okay here's a file uh, give me uh, the the signature uh, generated from the structure and it will generate it to you um, only one disadvantage is uh, it takes a bit uh, more resources to generate this but uh, we have dealt with this part as well uh, i will tell it a li little bit later um, Okay, with this techni technique, you can uh, easily detect clean code, so it's it's a no-brainer. You can detect modified code. Uh, you can add spaces, new lines, change uh, anyhow the uh, name of the variables, function names. Um, uh, you, you can uh, create any zigzag from the code and it will uh, be still detected. Uh, and uh, it can detect the obfuscation method, so it's still not able to um, to detect uh, what was obfuscated because in some cases uh, you need to run the code to find out uh, what was uh, the, the the real intention. But it can detect the obfuscation uh, method, and this is a, a very important step uh, to. Uh, to uh, create a system that is able to uh, to detect uh, evil <laughs> uh, obfuscated files. Okay, so we have this uh, source structure based detection. I will uh, show you in in our demo uh, how uh, how it works. But before we go on, let me tell you a couple of words about how we dealt with the high resource usage. Um, so, uh, one thing that we implemented is an index of the files. So, uh, once you um, you make a full scan with BitNinja, uh, it will build up an index of your files, and uh, this index will contain all information necessary to uh, to uh, do structure-based uh, detection. 
And this is important because uh, it means that you only have to run a full scan on your server once. Once you run it, uh, the index is built and uh, then uh, BitNinja will uh, only uh, take care uh, of the uh, modified files and the newly created files and update the index. So um, th this is one, uh, one uh, technique uh, that we implemented to deal with high resource usage. The other one is, um, is caching. We implemented a, a two-layered cache uh, in, in our uh, malware detection engine that is capable to, um, to, to skip all the steps uh, that, uh, uh, that, that, that is necessary. Uh, in case of uh, there's a file that was already scanned. So if the content of the file was already scanned, uh, then, then it can rely on the cache. Uh, so just to give you an example, um, uh, WordPress has like uh, 3000 files. So the, the core uh, WordPress engine has about uh, uh, 3000 files. Uh, so, uh, you need to uh, scan uh, those 3000 files only once uh, and uh, and uh, then uh, it will be cached and all the other occurrences of those files will be um, searched from the cache and it, it makes um, uh, all the detections uh, much faster than uh, than than if you uh, scan uh, through uh, each files so uh, this this is an important thing to to highlight that uh, we even uh, added uh, some steroids uh, for the uh, for the perf performance of the uh, detect detection engine okay so we can detect uh, the uh, obfuscation uh, mechanism but how can we find out uh, if the uh, obfuscated uh, content was malicious or uh, or not uh, to decide this, uh, you need to run the code, but running the code on your server is not that good idea. Uh, running malware on a production server is never, <laughs> never a good idea. So that's why we implemented a sandbox farm. Uh, this is basically a couple external servers uh, that use virtualization to um, to, to run PHP codes. And um, when, uh, when uh, our engine detects an obfuscated file, it will send uh, the content uh, automatically to the, uh, to the sandboxing system. And there uh, a, a virtual server will spin up, uh, run the code and, um, and inspect the behavior of the code. So for example, uh, what kind of network traffic uh, does it generate? Uh, are there any new files created? W what was the output? What was the, uh, the uh, process uh, tree? Or what was the internal state of, the, of PHP? And based on this uh, behavior, uh, uh, behavior signatures, uh, we can uh, find out uh, if uh, the code was uh, legit code or or an, uh, uh, a malicious code. So uh, that that's how we plan to deal with uh, with uh, obfuscated uh, malicious codes. Because um, okay, this is also very important that obfuscated code is not always malicious. So if you try to, to um, quarantine all obfuscated codes, then you will have a lot of uh, customer complaints and this is guaranteed. We tried it. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, the next um, uh, technology we use is the obfuscation. Um, to deobfuscate uh, the code, you have to run it, uh, but you can only run it inside a, a sandbox if you uh, want to make sure that uh, you are uh, you are safe. 
Um, so uh, that's what we we do. So when when we send uh, uh, a code to to the um, sandbox system, it will try to deobfuscate the code by running it, and this way it can uh, it, it can match it can use the regular matching uh, mechanisms uh, to find out uh, the intention of the code. Okay, uh, here you can find uh, uh, an overview of the different uh, detection uh, mechanisms. And uh, uh, basically what we uh, uh, implanted now are the green ones. So these are the new uh, techniques that we added uh, to, uh, to the arsenal of uh, BitNinja uh, malware detection engine. And uh, this way, I believe we can uh, we can build uh, the best, well, uh, first uh, world class uh, detection uh, engine. Um, okay, um, let me before we start the demo, uh, let me uh, tell you a couple uh, things about uh, why the let's make the internet safe together <laughs> is important uh, to me. So together uh, to me means that um, that we share uh, our data. So, uh, okay, um, to make it a bit more clear, um, the success behind our uh, uh, IP reputation list is, uh, is based on the fact that uh, all of our users uh, share uh, Share their knowledge, their uh, their uh, uh, attack information through uh, BitNinja um, with each other, and uh, that that what made uh, the IP reputation so effective and relatively uh, low uh, false positives. And uh, I believe uh, creating uh, a security tool set for uh, SMBs is uh, so it this is essential uh, to to uh, to create uh, to build uh, build on the community and build on the uh, sharing is caring <laughs> um, uh, mindset and uh, uh, that's the exact same uh, reason why uh, why we implemented uh, um, our new um, malware detection mechanism on sharing because uh, now uh, you can uh, create your own signatures uh, so uh, i will show it in, in the demo uh, that you can uh, generate a signature and uh, and you can easily share that signature between your servers, it, it, it will be uh, very, very easy. So if you find a new kind of malware, you can generate a signature and uh, and with the same, uh, with, with one command, you can share it uh, through all of your servers. Uh, we've also implemented um, a kind of uh, um, uh, step-by-step uh, uh, way of creating signatures so uh, i know how frustrating it is when you uh, when you create a signature and uh, after you deployed you realize that oh no <laughs> i made a mistake and it uh, quarantined a lot of i don't know uh, for example all the the, the uh, empty files on my on my server or it uh, quarantined uh, a lot of uh, well, index.php files. <laughs> um, so that's why uh, we, uh, uh, we implemented it a, a safe way. So when you create a, a signature, first um, you're gonna uh, create it in a, a log-only mode signature. So you, you have a signature and all your servers will uh, report to you uh, if they found any matching files and then you can decide uh, if it's good enough to you uh, to go on and put that signature uh, in production mode and quarantine those files that was matched and uh, on, on this system uh, we will build the same sharing mechanism that we created with uh, ip addresses 
so uh, when we found find uh, the same signatures uh, uh, created and uh, and used by a couple users uh, then then we will uh, move that signature to a global list and uh, broadcast it to all of the users uh, so uh, that that is what what I, what I think uh, is important uh, in our mission to, to, to make it together and uh, well that's the uh, that's 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 part of our, our mission okay so let's jump into the demo give me a second and I oops okay okay so uh, this is a demo server um, and uh, and I have a, a malware. I just downloaded it from a random repository. BitNinja was not able to detect this one. Uh, I mean the uh, the regular engine. Uh, so why not add adding uh, this as a new signature? And to demonstrate you the um, and the structure uh, based uh, signature the power of the, uh, this uh, mechanism uh, i uh, modified uh, so I, i've created uh, different versions from this malware with some modifications for example here i added a couple uh, new lines here you can see that uh, it says display errors off uh, and here we have it like this okay the version 3 uh, has some uh, some uh, enters removed and in the fourth version we can say any set and let's say empty and in version 5 we can well change something well i i guess if, if i change it, it it will change the uh, actual uh, uh, code as well so I, i'm not sure it will if it will detect but probably it will and let's say uh, okay i can remove some characters from here and make it a bit more fun okay so uh, i have five versions of the same uh, malware uh, let's create a signature for for this i've prepared uh, the bit ninja cli uh, command for this but uh, if you uh, type bit ninja CLI, uh, you will get a, a, a help, and we have a quite detailed help description about how to create a new signature. So you need uh, the module name, the create signature, and a path, and there's an optional name, uh, and there's some other options that we want uh, use today. Okay, so we have this command that says uh, create a signature from the original file and name it uh, php rss obfuscated malware let's see okay so uh, when i i run it it uh, immediately show me uh, those files that uh, that was found on the server uh, it, it also uh, shows me that there was a, a, um, a file, but it was deleted uh, since then. Yeah, that was the original name, and I renamed it to RSS uh, malware PHP. And um, uh, and if I uh, hit P, like proceed, then uh, this newly created uh, signature uh, will be uh, broadcasted to all the uh, all of my servers where actually currently I only have one server but if I have 10 or 100 then it will be broadcasted to all of them 
and uh, and the servers will reply back with uh, the found uh, uh, malwares and they don't have to or don't they don't need to uh, do a, a full scan on the server they can fetch it from the indexed uh, indexed information so this is a pretty fast thing um, doing a full scan on a server is like with, with, with lots of uh, WordPresses, like 1,000 WordPresses, uh, well, it's like uh, six, seven hours. Um, but uh, with with this index, it takes like 20 seconds. So let's see. Proceed. <clears throat> okay, so the new signature was successfully created. It was uploaded to uh, the Ninja Cloud, and. Uh, and uh, the signature was uh, 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 moved to validating state and broadcasted to all the servers. Um, yeah, and now um, I, I can exit from this process and I can uh, um, I can uh, come back to here and and move uh, this. Uh, um, the signature to uh, production, so we, we call it publish. We can uh, I can publish this signature uh, uh, later, or I can wait until uh, the servers uh, reply back. Um, sorry for the poor uh, um, output, but uh, uh, that that's how uh, the servers uh, re report back uh, the the found malwares. Currently, uh, we only have this one uh, server called dev. Uh, later on, it will be uh, a bit prettier, but we, we just finished the, this uh, development, so I'm <laughs> very excited and I hope everything will work. Um, so uh, it reported back uh, all the, the five uh, uh, instances of this uh, malware even found the version five where, where I changed uh, uh, a variable name. So this is a kind of good sign. Uh, and now I can uh, type uh, Y and enter to, uh, okay, but before we, we uh, put it uh, to uh, production, uh, I, I can show you what you can see on the dashboard now, because in the infected files menu, you will find uh, those log-only uh, catches of the malware. And here's the name the, that we gave to this uh, signature. Uh, so everything works fine so far. And uh, when I uh, say yes and hit enter, uh, it, it will uh, change the, st uh, the uh, state of the um, signature to published. And uh, from this point, um, the engine will quarantine the files that was uh, found by the, um, by the uh, uh, engine, by the signature. And as you can see, uh, the files have been quarantined and uh, Hopefully we will see, uh, not yet, okay. So it takes a couple uh, more seconds to um, for, for the data to come in, um, but we can uh, uh, create uh, an even newer version of this malware. So let's say, oops. Malware X, yeah. Uh, yeah, so these files are not current in because they are in the root directory and I excluded the root directory just to uh, show you. Uh, and okay, let's say, make it capital, ignore. Okay, so if I copy this file to the home directory, it have been quarantined instantly by the real-time detection. And I think now we can see the catches. Yeah, here we are. Uh, so all the files have been quarantined uh, just like uh, with uh, the regular um, signatures. Okay, uh, so uh, that's how uh, 
how this uh, new uh, malware detection engine works in a nutshell. Uh, one more thing I would like to show you is how to manage these signatures. So, okay, maybe it's faster like, okay. Um, so you can list your signatures using the CLI. List signatures. And by default, it will list your uh, signatures that are uh, in validating state. But you can say state is published. So then you can find uh, this uh, RSS obfuscated malware signature that we uh, just created. And uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can remove uh, published or, or validating state signature as well. Um, for this, the command is uh, discard signature and it needs an ID. So first I list my signatures and that that's a remove, for example, this Epsi. Yeah, and now the signature the, the validating state signature have been removed. Um, okay, so um, the uh, cloud part is in production now, um, and the CLI will be pushed within a couple of days because we have to wait uh, all the test servers to, to finish uh, testing the agent because the CLI is part of the BitNinja agent. Uh, and um, and soon uh, we will uh, we will release uh, the agent as well. Uh, let me go back to the webinar. I'm sorry. Uh, um, yeah, and I, maybe I can give you some camera as well. Okay, so I, I can't uh, show you the <laughs> presentation and the cameras at the same time. But anyway, um, that's that's uh, what we've been working on. Uh, and uh, uh, I hope you will uh, enjoy uh, using this, uh, this new um, detection engine. And if you have any questions, then, um, then I'm happy to answer. Now, uh, I believe uh, you can raise your hand uh, in the GoToWebinar software and uh, you can ask questions as well. Um, I'm a bit new with this uh, webinar thing, but uh, okay, let's try that. Uh, if, if you have questions, then uh, please uh, raise your hand. And I, I will mute my, so I can uh, answer your questions. No questions so far. Okay, so well then, uh, mm -hmm. maybe it's better if I switch back here. <laughs> okay, we will uh, send out uh, the presentation uh, via email. And uh, as far as I know, um, there will be exclusive Ninja Fest goodies um, that uh, that we will um, give away uh, to to our attendees. Um, Uh, 
Okay, uh, so I'm asking my colleagues uh, if there's any uh, questions from uh, from the audience or through chat or through any channel. If there's none, then I would like to thank you so much for attending my webinar, and uh, I hope. Uh, uh, Okay, so can Vitinja CI be implemented on our own server? So the question was, uh, uh, can Vitinja CI be implemented on our own server? Um, I'm not sure if I understand this question correctly, but so uh, when you install Bitninja, uh, you will you have Bitninja CLI. So after you install Bitninja, uh, you can type Bitninja CLI, uh, so this is part of the agent. Um, uh, it, it, uh, it will uh, be installed uh, inside the user as bin directory, so, uh, so this will be, uh, uh, this will be, uh, um, accessible uh, through uh, any bash session and uh, uh, if the question was uh, if you can create your own uh, bitninja CLI then my answer is uh, also yes because uh, we have a, a, a great API uh, that is uh, documented with Swagger so if you would like to implement a, a new uh, version of Bitninja CLI, then uh, then you can do it and you, you are more than welcome to do it. And at the same time, uh, soon, so I believe within a couple of weeks, uh, there will be a web interface at, for adding new signatures as well. So um, uh, there uh, there are already, uh, so the, the um, uh, web interface is under development, and uh, I saw uh, the, the screens. Uh, it will be uh, very easy to use. You just upload a, a file or copy paste uh, the source code, and it will generate. And you can um, do all the uh, uh, you, you you can uh, do all the uh, things that you can do with the CLI. Uh, so you can move uh, to validating state, you can move to uh, published state, and you can revoke uh, them as well. And uh, uh, within a couple weeks, uh, there will be even more functionalities uh, for this um, signature management, like you will be able to view the uh, content of the um, uh, quarantine files, that will help you to decide uh, uh, about a signature. Uh, so thank you so much for the question. So uh, one more question. Um, um, can we use uh, a standalone scan for a specific server without any other features? Um, uh, Yes, so so you can uh, you can um, do full scans um, uh, with the CLI or or uh, with the web interface as well. Uh, from the web interface, you just uh, go to malware scanner, uh, you choose your server, and you say scan like scan home and start the malware scan and. Uh, uh, and uh, you you don't have to um, so you, you can use separately the real time scanner and the uh, manual or or, or or scheduled scanner functionality. Um, if you want to disable the real time scanner, um, then uh, I believe you you can't disable it uh, through the web interface but uh, in the config you can let me show you how uh, so the the real time scanner the, the the name of the module of the real time scanner is malware detection whereas the uh, scheduled and manual scanner is is the malware scanner 
So if you uh, want to disable the real-time scanner, then you go to the config and uh, and say, uh, I want to disable. Oops. Malware uh, detection. Yeah, so you add uh, the malware detection uh, uh, to the disabled modules list, and then you restart the agent. And from this time, uh, the uh, real-time scanner won't uh, spin up and won't uh, touch uh, the, the newly created and modified files, but you can still uh, do a manual scan. So you can still uh, run run it uh, from the CLI or or from the web interface, and uh, uh, without any other features. Um, well, yeah, you can you can disable any modules, uh, whichever you you want. Uh, so if you just if you want to use uh, BitNinja only for malware scanning, then you can disable all the other uh, modules. But in most of the cases, uh, I recommend you to to, to, to not do this <laughs> because uh, all the other uh, modules are uh, also important for your uh, for your uh, server's uh, security. Uh, but uh, there are scenarios. There may be scenarios when when you only need one module, and uh, and uh, with most of the modules you can do. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, is there any other questions? Or, or okay, okay. So that's all I believe. Uh, so thank you so much for attending once again, and uh, I hope you enjoy this, and see you next time. <laughs>